Hello my soccer universe. Well, I planned actually on an Austria review uh, for this week. However, I got abandoned to go to the stadium. No, to be fair. We had a wonderful trip to Vienna, but with all the walking and, you know, not that much sleeping, then uh, you got on driving. Uh, we all were rather tired, to be honest. And then, of course, there's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the Mother's Day belated, probably, because this will not post on Mother's Day. Uh, and so, you know, motivation was not all the time. In addition, the weather turns out to be a little bit nasty as well. Uh, looking at the weather, the weather forecast would have meant since we are kind of so low sitting that we, are, we would be totally in the rain all the time. Pair that with tired or tiredness, motivation was not high. However, I was a little bit more on the side of going. Uh, I was fine with my wife not, not according to the little daughter said nah, she wouldn't go either. Big daughter, I wanna come. Half an hour before we want to go. No, I wanna stay home. So we stayed home. So therefore you get the full uh, Austria-Germany experience for two rounds, but you know, that's fun as well. And I'm wearing Eintracht Frankfurt, who probably had the most interesting week. First confirming that Coach Glasner is uh, leaving by the end of the season. Now everyone is focused on the cup final. Actually, many Frankfurt fans don't really understand why, uh, but seemingly, you know, they had to make a decision. And Frankfurt uh, responded well to that, as we'll see. And they had probably the most impressive win overall. Uh, but the general theme is that the air is getting thin on top of the German Bundesliga. You know, it's two rounds to go. It's still a point. Bayern have probably a slightly rougher schedule coming up. So that is also a part. But it's also getting really, really thin and the relegation battle. And just after a weekend where, I, where we really thought there could have been pretty decisive uh, things going on with Bochum losing and everyone else getting points, Stuttgart maybe not so much, and that Augsburg and Hoffenheim with their wins look kind of safe, boom, Bochum win. And everyone else is shivering again. And it's not as much of a foregone conclusion as it seemed to be. But I want to start this video in Austria also with the relegation battle where um, we had two interesting results. Ried getting a 1-1 draw at Tyrol and then Hartberg winning in Altach, which means safety for Hartberg. However, Altach are now in serious trouble uh, themselves uh, because they are now level on points with Ried, as we will see. Uh, and Hartberg actually secured their stay in the, in the Bundesliga as it was with a 2-2 against Lustenau. Today, the game that was not meant to be, honestly, I think if you have season tickets, yes, it would be nice to go to every game, but on the other side, you don't really have to go. I mean, and especially the ones that we got such a good, good deal. I'm fine if we're not going for one. So, you know, I have to, despite me being maybe a little bit sad, I accept the wishes of my family to, you know, we don't, we didn't need to go. It was an early kick kickoff anyway. I have to say the game over was rather, rather entertaining. It was only one goal and it was a little bit of, of a miracle. I think there are four times the team hit the wood, woodwork. Three times Salzburg, once Lusk. Um, yes, Salzburg had the better chance, but overall I think Lusk was very well in that game. It was overshadowed. I talked about the rebranding of Lusk uh, and the fans kind of used this as another sign. You know, we were not even involved in this is sold as the fans wanted us to have this rebranding, blah, 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 for 90 minutes and 8 seconds. Lask was found in 1999, they decided to not support the team. Uh, but as a, sh as a strike, kind of, they made sure that the team knows this is not because of them, that they're doing quite well and they, they will always support them. However, they need to show their dissatisfaction with the club's leadership. Well, so be it. It's an old story that, you know, I could make a whole video, video about, but I, I'm i really sick and tired of the whole situation. And yeah, it's not pretty. It gives a really, really bad, leaves a bad taste in the mouth. But as I say, last goes uh, well in the game. I mean, Sheshko probably should have put Salzburg in the lead. He was when he got suddenly alone in front of Laval, who is now playing because Schlager is leaving at the end of the season, uh, hitting the, po uh, the post. Then do 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 the clear. Then there was a scr goal must scramble again. Another header goes onto the post, but I think there were two last defenders there. This would no no not not have gone in. 
But then uh, after this 20, 25 minutes where Salzburg were kind of a little bit the more dominant team, Lusk actually got it then them into and you know both teams had absences and Lusk actually created chances. Michal hitting the crossbar then a few more where I think if you pay, play the last pass a little bit more precisely you could actually score. Second half, the whole game that was really exciting in the fourth first half, despite nil-nil, uh, kind of went a level lower. I thought that Salzburg had maybe for again for at the beginning a little bit more control without creating many chances until the ball falls to Sheshko uh, and he is in front of the goalie alone and makes it 1-0 in the 64th. Then Lusk again creating a few, creating a few half chance, chance chances with a little bit of a look. Uh, and some better passes. I have, there was one season where Uzo uh, ran through and he placed the pass back to going in a rally red relative badly and he then takes a bad shot. I think that was the, bad, the best looking action. 1 0 for Salzburg, uh, meaning the Lask is cemented more or less in the third spot, which no, is not a bad thing. Uh, but with, with, with the point, you would have secured th at least third spot for sure. Uh, which means a uh, secured uh, group stage in the Europa, Europa Conference League. Uh, Sturmgaard having no trouble with Austria Klagenfurt. It was a crazy start with the first 15 minutes, three goals, Schneck and Zakaria 2-0, then uh, Blaunstein pulls one back. Uh, and then Zakaria converts a penalty to Scherer, misses one but often grew on the rebound. 4-1, Sturmgaard keeping up with Salzburg. I uh, would have hoped that Lask will take points of Salzburg because then it would be within a point again to open up the title race. I personally, just for mathematical reasons, were hoping that the derby between Austrian Rapid end in a draw because that would have sealed third spot as well. Um, but with Austria Vienna winning, it basically meant that uh, you know it's only goal if the, the difference in head to head. I think even the head to head Lask looked actually quite good there. So it seems all good for me. At this moment, Tobacco, which was the huge hero, scoring three goals against Rapid, two in short succession, uh, mid first half. Uh, Burgstaller pulls one back. Uh, Rapid were actually pressing, and Burgstaller had a pretty big chance to equalize, but in the end, Austria Vienna deep in stoppage time. Tobacco scores his third. Uh, I think he's taking, he, he, he's not even leading the goal scoring charts. Deserved win for Austria Vienna, and Rapid Vienna are entering a little bit of a crisis mode. Um, if we look here in the standings, uh, we see now Salzburg and Sturm, it is three points. We have a big one car coming up, it's still very much in Salzburg's hands. Um, Sturm are cemented in second, last cemented in third. Um, and then for the last non-player player spots between Austria Vienna and Rapid and Austria Vienna are seemingly now in that spot very well on the bottom. Reed now level with Alter, however, uh, holding. Still, uh, at this moment, still the tiebreaker. Uh, so it's a head to head there, there, there too. And for the remaining playoff spots, Austria Lusten look good. And it's between Wolfsburg, Hartberg, and Tirol. And Tirol is taking a real nose dive uh, towards the end of, of the season. And a similar CHC situation, as you can see here in the um, uh, expected standings that I pull, pulled up, it basically tells the entire story. Next round is a big one. I think this is a pretty decisive round. Um, we have Ried against Altach. Um, if there's a winner, that team is probably going to stay up. This is a must, but I actually think it's because it's a must not lose game that this will probably end up in a draw. Uh, other, other than that, you know, uh, could be more in, in, in interesting, but this is only who goes into the playoff spot, so that could be a decider for the other two as well. Then uh, the Austria Derby, okay. Uh, Rapid against Lask is a big game however Rapid is probably not gonna cannot catch Lask anymore uh, Austria Vienna could if they win by a whole lot so you know uh, there's not much riding on either of these games but there's a whole lot riding between Salzburg and Sturmgratz Salzburg need to avoid defeat then I think they're champions uh, if they win it they're for sure champions because you know uh, with two rounds to go superior goal difference that is it however if Sturm win it then we're talking. Then it will be interesting. But even if they win it, then they're still level on goal difference. Uh, 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 le uh, level of points. I think South Salzburg holds it. The ultimate tiebreaker. Going over to Germany. Uh, current basically relegated in all but fact. Uh, Hertha PSA with a 5 to win. 
perfect first half because uh, Köln take the lead, had to turn it around. Köln before the half get a 3 2. Bayern easing over Schalke. This is a Schalke, Schalke team that seems to be so hard fighting against Mainz. Easing over Schalke. Uh, 3 0 at, at, at the half, and then Bayern didn't even play, but Schalke invited them to score. When Gnabry, Matisse, Tail and Masraoui scored the other three, uh, Schalke could have got out of this with a 3-0 three, three and kind of their confidence a little bit intact. 6-0 hurts a lot, but I think the result of the afternoon was definite, definitely Bochum's 3-2 win over uh, Augsburg, where they took an early lead uh, through Antwerp J. Maya equalizes in the 29th, but in very short period after the uh, break, it's first an own goal and then a uh, Lozilla shot from far, far out that turns it towards Bochum and Kelvin Ligeboa can only pull one back late on Bochum. Hang on, and this is huge three points. After the disaster they had last week, this was all running for them. As I said, Eintracht, Coach Glasner, of course, um, on up in the stands. However, he's under Anger Schmidt, co uh, coach, easing over Mainz. That came a little bit un unexpected at the ref in the bad form that uh, they were. Kamada with the penalty, then uh, Tuto uh, making it already 2 0 at the half in the cold goal. Mirani with a pretty nice goal. Uh, a 3 0 win. And uh, Frankfurt are back in kind of European count contention. Then we had a final that they had. That was another big one between Union and Freiburg uh, for the Champions League. Union really uh, cut through Freiburg in the first, first half with uh, Behrens getting get, get goals and Geraldo Becker scoring two all counter attacks, more or less typically un, 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 Union style. However, Freiburg came back, uh, a Gulde in the 56 and then a penalty by Grifo. That was one of the you know, panic in the middle, but so slow. The goalie goes in one corner, comes back and kind of wants to could almost save it, but it goes in. And you really thought at the point that the game could turn, but then uh, Laiduni in the 80th settles the game and it is 4-2 uh, and Union Berlin will go to the Champions League. Let me repeat that. Union Berlin are going to the champ Champions League. No one thought that this could ever happen. No one. This is an absolute miracle. Shows that good work pays off even for a smaller team. Potentially an interesting result is for Wolfsburg's 2-1 and rather safe 2-1 win over Hoffenheim because that's a, a result that get Hoffenheim straight back into trouble. Then Dortmund had to win over, over, over Gladbach, but Dortmund at home, there is no trouble. 4-0, easy at the halftime. Mal, Bellingham and a double uh, by Alea. However, then two goals back by Gladbach uh, until uh, Giovanni Reina deep in stoppage time. Makes it a 5-2, so maybe a little bit of off of a double, but you know, things to come and again you will rule this night in Bochum although this is not where they lost it there were many other uh, points where Dortmund actually lost the law lost it but you know that's the last one where, where, where they dropped their points because at the moment Dortmund really looked like they're invincible but no, they're not uh, Stuttgart had a lead through uh, Giresi a penalty in the 57th a win here would have been vital for them Leverkusen more or less looking at the Europa League. Uh, they know that this is probably a competition where they could reach the final if they can break down Roma uh, in the Bundesliga. They're also relatively safe in the European spot, uh, but Champ Champions League is out of uh, question at the moment. So yeah, um, it was a big chance for Stuttgart, but uh, another penalty league is given by Palacios. Have to say, I didn't really agree with that, and Stuttgart missed it at one point of wide open net. And if you don't convert them, you cannot make it. But it was a very interesting end of the game. Very much up and down. But it's only a 1-1. And then Leipzig all but seal a Champions League spot with a 2-1 at Werder Bremen. Uh, after Nkunku goal is this allowed. Bitten could actually give Werder a lead. And then very, very late. Willy Orban 87th equalized. And then deep in stoppage time. And there was a round of deep stoppage time goals. Soboschlag gets the winner for Leipzig. That probably is enough for them to secure Champions League given that Union Berlin beat Freiburg and they themselves beat Freiburg. So Freiburg more or less out of the running, which we see here now in the standings. Dortmund could close the gap in terms of percentages. It was 75-25, now 69-31. We'll see because Bayern probably have the harder uh, remaining program for that. And Dortmund did not drop the points against uh, Gladbach. 
Um, we see Wolfsburg now ahead of Leverkusen, but I still would think that Lever Leverkusen will get that sixth spot. Uh, but Frankfurt is also in that con just in the conversation here as well. But we look at the bottom. Uh, Hoffenheim not out of trouble. And as we will see on the last day of the season, Stuttgart and Hoffenheim will play against each other in Stuttgart. And that means that the two coaches that started for the opposite team will meet on the last day of the season, which I find very intriguing. And goal difference could come into play here as well. So I think this is a really, really interesting situation that could come there at the moment. Hertha are down. Stuttgart slightly ahead of Schalke, who have a rather tough program. Bochum is also in there. So it's also, you know, relegation, promotion, da, 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 uh, the relegation, relegation playoffs. It is really, really, really tight down there. Um, expected standings say that Schalke will go into playoffs. Bochum survives Stuttgart and Hertha down. Would not be happy about that, but you know. So uh, it, it is what, what, what it is. Here are the last two rounds. Uh, we see Bayern against Leipzig. That's the last, for me, that's the last chance where Bayern could uh, stumble up. Where Dortmund have to go to Augsburg, which we say, yeah, it's in Bavaria and Augsburg are not quite fighting against the relegation anymore. Uh, Hoffenheim Union Berlin. Uh, Hoffenheim better get something, otherwise they have the final. Stuttgart have to go to Mainz, a Mainz team that is also plunging at it and must win. Schalke against Frankfurt, um, competing interests right there. And Bochum at Hertha. Relegation six pointer, although this now means way more for Bochum than for Hertha. Although Hertha, if they win, they probably gave themselves a last chance. However, if the other results don't go their way, they are already out. And on the final match day, all games played at the same time. Uh, if you look, Bochum have to play against Leverkusen, not the easiest one. Uh, we have a Bo uh, Dortmund against Mainz. There was something. <laughs> Köln against Bayern. Also not quite easy. We have Leipzig against Schalke. That's why Schalke don't look good. And we have Stuttgart against Hoffenheim. That could be a real finale. So uh, look out for that. So yeah. That was it from me from Austria and Germany. Uh, please let me know what you thought about the results in these leagues. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.